Last November, I was lucky enough to attend a lecture in London given by Professor John McGeehan from Portsmouth University. The lecture was about the discovery of an enzyme called petase. Amazingly, this enzyme is able to break down polyethylene terephthalate, or PET for short, into the two monomers that it is composed of, terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. The bacterium Idonella sacchiasis that produces the enzyme was found in a sample of PET contaminated sediment collected near a plastic bottle recycling facility in Japan. For the biochemists amongst you, there are actually two enzymes involved in the process. First petase depolymizes PET into mono 2 hydroxyethyl telephthalate, which is then cleaved to telephthalic acid and ethylene glycol by an enzyme called metase. These two enzymes enable the bacterium to live on the plastic PET as its sole carbon source. Professor McGeehan and Dr. Greg Beckham, who works at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, solved the crystal structure of petase and then used this 3D information to understand how the enzyme works. Whilst working on this, they engineered an enzyme that degraded plastic even faster than the one that evolved in nature. As many of you will know, plastic in the environment is a huge issue as it takes many years for it to break down, depending on the material it is made from. For example, plastic bags can take 20 years to degrade, whilst plastic straws can take 200. So plastic accumulates in the environment, causing huge problems such as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. PET takes around 450 years to degrade, and we use a lot of PET as it is strong but lightweight and clear. It is widely used for packaging foods such as cooking oil and prepared food trays. It is also used to hold products such as shampoo and liquid hand soap, and it is used extensively as single-use drinks bottles. To make PET, the two monomers, ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, are combined to form a polymer chain. This chain can be cut into small pellets, heated to a molten liquid, which can then be moulded into any shape that is required. It was first synthesised in North America in the 1940s. Today, half of the world's synthetic fibre is made from PET, which we know as polyester. I found some interesting statistics about plastics. You can see from the graph that production from 1950 until 2015 has risen exponentially. In 2018, a global analysis of plastic found that, to date, about 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic have been produced in the world. 6.3 billion tonnes of that plastic is waste, which equates to 55 million jumbo jets. Of the 6.3 billion tonnes of waste, only 9% has been recycled. A whopping 79% is accumulating in landfills or is in the environment as litter. If present trends continue, it is estimated that by 2050, there will be 12 billion metric tonnes of plastic in landfills. That amount is 35 times as heavy as the Empire State Building. An estimated 8 million metric tonnes of plastic ends up in the oceans every year. That is the equivalent of 5 grocery bags of plastic trash for every foot of coastline around the globe. 80% of ocean plastic comes from land-based sources rather than ocean-based sources such as fisheries and fishing vessels. Of the 80% from land-based sources, three quarters comes from uncollected waste, and the remaining quarter from leaks within the waste management system itself, such as illegal dumping of waste, which saves transporters time and money. More than half of the plastics which finds its way into the oceans comes from just five countries. These are China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. It is believed that a 45% reduction in plastic waste reaching our oceans could be achieved by targeting these five countries with various measures such as reducing leakage from the waste management system, increasing waste collection rates, using a variety of technologies to treat waste and manually sorting high plastic waste. So what about recycling? Doesn't that reduce the amount of plastic polluting the environment? Well, in 2018, research showed that only 16% of plastic waste was reprocessed to make new plastics. Some plastics, like those used to make shower curtains or wrap bread and frozen food, can't be recycled, but PET can. PET can be commercially recycled by cleaning, shredding, melting, 
and then the plastic is remoulded. Recycling PET is used to make new PET bottles, carpet, clothing, fibrofill for winter jackets and sleeping bags, construction materials and protective packaging. In the US, the recycling rate of PET bottles and jars was 31%, which is a bit lower than Europe, which has a recycling rate of 52%. So why isn't more recycled? The reality is that only good quality plastics can go through the recycling process. Any plastic which has food residues in it or on it cannot be recycled. Some recycling factories are able to wash the plastic, but if not, the plastic is lumped with other rubbish and thrown in landfill or incinerated. Even in really efficient recycling factories, up to 30% of plastics cannot be separated or are too contaminated to be recycled. And one of the only options for efficiently dealing with this waste material is incineration. Much of the plastic that has been used in hospitals is also incinerated as it has the benefit of eliminating any hazardous contamination. To give you a sense of the scale of the problem, in 2018, across Europe, 29.1 megatons of post-consumer waste plastics were collected. After sorting, 9.4 megatons were sent for recycling, that is only 32.3%. 12.4 megatons were sent for incineration, and 7.2 megatons were sent to landfill. Of the 9.4 megatons sent for recycling, 1.9 megatons were exported to be dealt with outside of the EU. 2.6 megatons were sent to be incinerated due to being contaminated. So only 4.9 megatons of plastic was actually recycled. This is only 17% of the total that was originally collected. Also, recycling is an energy intensive process and expensive, becoming more expensive with each additional step added, such as sorting and washing. Another problem is that each time plastic is recycled, its quality is degraded. When it is melted, the polymer chains are partially broken down, decreasing its tensile strength and viscosity, making it unsuitable to use in food packaging. So most plastic can only be recycled a limited number of times, before it has degraded so much it becomes unusable. So whilst recycling is helpful, it is not the answer to reducing the pollution caused by plastics. Our use of plastics at the moment follows what is called a linear economy approach, whereby the plastics are produced, used once and discarded, the classic single-use plastic. Even if we recycle the plastic, it still ultimately ends up as waste. But there is an emerging industry of chemical recycling, which hopes to change this linear approach to a circular model, which is where the enzyme PETase comes in. And there are also some other technologies being developed which can also be used to chemically recycle plastic. In chemical recycling, the polymers which make up the plastic material are broken down into their constituent monomers or other small organic compounds. These can then be used to remake the plastic and it is at the same high quality as when it was first made. It is not degraded and so it can again be used for such things as wrapping food and not low grade products such as carpets which ultimately end up in landfill. At the moment, the chemical recycling technologies are in their infancy and there is no economic advantage to using them. Much investment is needed for the factories to scale up their operations and, at the moment, it is cheaper to keep using the original monomers derived from fossil fuels. However, some research has shown that this could all change in the near future. There is potential for the chemical industry to build a new and profitable branch of the industry recycling plastics. This industry could be worth as much as $55 billion a year worldwide by 2030, all of which I find a very exciting prospect. I finished writing this on New Year's Eve, a poignant time for most people. I have sadness in my heart about the state of our one world, everything from plastics and climate change to Covid, and also on a personal level, the sadness about my mum's health. But looking forward to the year ahead, I also remain hopeful that scientific research will help us put right some of the wrong that we have done to this world. And I continue to marvel at all the people who volunteer to help in some way, from cleaning beaches to disentangling marine animals from discarded plastic, and those who put their lives on the line guarding such animals as rhinos and gorillas. There is such a wealth of empathy, passion and commitment in the world 
that it brings a smile to my lips and warms my heart. I wish everyone a very happy and hopeful new year.